Morning, everybody. My name is Maurice Pentel. Uh, I run a thing called the Customer Experience Foundation. <coughs> and we're in the business of um, advising large organizations and governments and suppliers to large organizations and governments about uh, contact strategy. And I kind of feel I, I, I've been handed a, a, a bit of a, a booby prize because I think in about 35 seconds or a minute, um, we're going to have a fire alarm. So uh, what I'm going to do is I, I'm just going to pad for a second or two just because I, I really don't know what else to do. Uh, and I'm going to talk about uh, I'm going to talk about that happiness survey, and I'm going to talk about some of the stats that have just been spoken about. Um, how many people in this room have an iPhone? Whoa, huge, uh, huge percentage. Uh, Blackberry, raise your hands. Okay, anyone got a Nokia? <laughs> this is the guy I'm going to pick on for the rest of today. Um, <clears throat> If I was to take this room as the nation, you might think that 70% of people, or 65% of people, have iPhones. And when we talk about the research today, I want you to be aware that all research is imperfect. We can take something from the big trends, that's very important. Perhaps most of us are happy. It's 76%, I think, in the, uh, in the research around happiness that, that said they were happy. I, I don't know what happy means. But in terms of where we are today and in terms of, uh, of what's going on today, <laughs> you've got to be careful about the numbers. We're going to cut this bit out of the movie, Trevor. Yeah. OK, okay uh, so if you hear it again, run. I, I mean, walk in an orderly fashion, obviously. Um, so one of the great things about my job is we get to answer, we, we get to think about and to answer some really interesting questions. And one of the questions uh, that we were asked was, what's the future of mobile and shopping? And um, the difficulty is, when you ask people about the future, what they pretty much do is describe today, only slightly better. And unless you actually give them some options, uh, then uh, they find it very difficult to engage. So what we did was we built a series of scenarios. Uh, we are, are, that today's comments are based on uh, a look at four separate markets, uh, the UK, the US, uh, France, and Germany. and um, I did very little of the research. Let me introduce you to the team. Hello, is this me? Hans wieder aus der Kundenerfahrung Stiftung. Hi there. In I am Crystal from the Customer Experience Foundation. What's up? Hello, I'm I am Dan. Jim. We are doing a research program and want to know what you think the future of shopping with your mobile Salut, will be. Je suis Judy de Customer Experience In this scene, I will be playing Manchester United and England star, Wayne Rooney. Chelsea and England captain. The greatest representative of technology, astronaut Neil Armstrong. Hi, this is Gunther and ich will play Albert Einstein. One is Queen Elizabeth II. Yes, remember if you want that, iPad 2. You have to be in it, to win it. Good luck. Yes, good luck and goodbye. And this thing ran uh, in those four markets, and in those four markets, uh, it was around 20% of people who actually accessed it via their mobile. So uh, here we are today. Um, this is already out of date. I, I, I wrote this up uh, around uh, two, two or three weeks ago. Uh, I saw some new figures this morning that makes this, uh, this, this point even more. Uh, there are more phones than people. But interestingly, uh, there's only around 4 billion users out of that nearly 7 billion uh, uh, population. So this is a world in which there are haves and have-nots. I'm going to be talking about that a little more. Um, but in terms of everything we know, the figures that, that um, 
uh, were quoted before that, that Amazon made um, more than a billion in their first year of trading through mobile. The huge untapped demand there is today is, uh, is on a scale that's difficult for people to, to, to imagine. M-commerce is already doing it today in billions. Uh, and I, I, I'm going to provide some context around that. But here's another concept that, that I'm going to be talking about today, which is M-transaction. Uh, we've talked about um, uh, NFC, near-field communications, and, and there are a number of technologies like near-field communications that will turn our mobile devices into a replacement for our plastic cards. So we will be walking through shops and we will either be tapping in PIN numbers or we will be swiping our telephones within a relatively short period of time. So when I talk about transaction, M transaction, what I'm talking about is the use of the mobile as a transactional device rather than the business of shopping. It, it, it's kind of an important distinction for me. Yeah. Uh, and looking forward and, and adding a pinch of salt to all the numbers and to all the hype, M transaction will probably be here within three years and will probably be the number one way in which we actually pay for things on a day-to-day -day basis. M marketing, well, uh, I know there's a lot of people involved in mobile marketing and in digital marketing in the room. And well done, you guys. You doubled last year. You're expected to double again next year. And here's the problem. Right now, today, how many people have actually bought something this week on their mobile phone? Raise your hands. Yeah, very, very small percentage. Shopping is the number 11 thing in the UK market. They're, they're different pieces in different markets, but shopping's really down there at the bottom. And as you're going to hear from Richard, uh, w w when he comes to talk about uh, ITV's uh, vision of the future, there's an awful lot of organizations who, who have a vision of dr driving other things to the mobile phone beyond shopping. So when you think of the mobile commerce piece, when you think of all of that, yeah, it's going to increase, but actually you are much more likely to talk about shopping on your mobile than you are to actually shop on your mobile today. Yeah, you're probably more likely to say something via SMS or actually have a conversation about your shopping than you are to actually transact on it. Yeah. And, uh, of course, the reason for that is because we're sociable creatures and although people may describe stuff on, on Facebook uh, that they're doing, it doesn't mean that they're going to have a role for that in terms of, uh, of commerce moving forward at the moment. More people take photos, send SMSs, do all of these other things, play games uh, as we do in this country than shop today. And the point is this. The battleground for shopping is going to be battery life. Who thinks their battery lasts long enough every day? There you go, 100%. You can have all this wonderful mobile content, you can look at M-commerce, you can look at M-transaction, you can look at M-marketing, but the reality is, unless you're engaged, unless you're getting the customer engaged, it's going to be a choice, and I'm always going to keep the last bit of my battery life so I can swipe at the tube. So it's going to be about choice, it's going to be about that, that, that issue. And here's the other bit of bad news, we are going to need a bigger boat. Right now, it's such a small part of what we do that our, our, our ability to assure the technologies, our ability to deliver fast, accurate content quickly, that's engaging is really limited. And that's important. Because most people, and I think it's 75% in a recent survey, think that if they have to wait more than 25 or 30 seconds for a website on their mobile, they won't go back. Yeah? Personally, if it's more than 10 seconds, I have the attention span of a 14-year-old. You know, if it doesn't come up quickly and it doesn't work first time, I'm gone. I'm not coming back. And I'm not everybody, but I think there's a lot of people like me out there. Increasingly, there is an appetite for a multi-channel experience. And for those of you uh, who aren't sure what that means, that means that when I do something on my mobile phone, what I want is to be able to phone the call center and for them to know where it went wrong 
and if necessary and there's a problem, I want to go into your shop and I want to use that place to solve my problem. And then I want it as part of my customer record so the next time it happens, I do not have to explain it again. Right? It's a single experience through multiple channels and for most organizations, there's a huge problem with that. So, I've already said, right now, it's a really small part of what goes on on the mobile, and it's a really small part of commerce. Well, think for a second, what happens if we actually do have a change? If it becomes a more significant part of phone activity, if it becomes uh, the most significant shopping channel, if it becomes a much larger part of the lives of most people. Right now, there's a relatively small number of people shopping. Yeah? It's a relatively small part of, of, uh, of mobile activity, and it is a relatively small piece of overall retail. And we haven't even taken into account yet transactions and the other piece. Well, the question is, could business assure this delivery? And probably the answer is no. But we looked at the numbers, and again, this comes with a pinch of salt. In three years' time, M transaction could be the second or third highest usage of, 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 uh, 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 of uh, the mobile phone. Yeah? And that's an important number. That's to say that most people, uh, who's, who doesn't have a plastic card on them to do transactions here today? Anybody? Yeah. Okay, so most of you, we expect, will be using your phone instead of a plastic card in three years' time. That's a significant revolution, yeah? Uh, M-commerce will increase, but the barriers around M-commerce include customer engagement. They include your ability to um, get that emotional factor. I don't know that I'm ever going to buy a jumper uh, via my mobile device. I'll buy a book, I'll buy a TV, I'll buy all kinds of things, but actually a jumper, I'm a funny shape, I want to see what it looks like on. Yeah, there will be some things you'll want to do. I won't buy a sandwich online. I may have a pizza delivered. There are some things we're never going to do. Yeah. So, commerce, it will have a role. It's not the only channel. It won't be the only way we'll engage. Yeah, marketing. It will continue. Uh, I think Richard's going to talk about some of the success stories in marketing, so I'm going to leave that. Uh, and service will have an increased role. Now, for you guys in digital, uh, this is a really good piece of news. Um, for those of you who develop mobile content, the whole world of multi-channel means that the individual customer journey will need to be normalized. So whereas at the moment you're thinking about apps, perhaps for marketing and, uh, and those kind of interactions, the reality is that what you define for the mobile device will affect how the businesses deliver all of their service. A single experience. So you do something funky on the mobile app, will you raise the bar for the rest of the business in terms of what they need to deliver? And that's a really important thing. But let's talk about where we are today. And where we are today is consumers, they want this stuff now. They don't want it in three years' time, they want this stuff now. And business, we're just not ready. We're thinking about it, we're working on our business cases. There's some small stuff going on, but really, uh, you know, the number of people who are actually shopping today is inhibited by where business is, not by what consumers want to do. And in the UK, well, culture makes a big difference across the piece. In the UK, what we're, we're keen on right now is we play games. That's, uh, that, that's pretty much our number one use of mobile phones. And what business told us was, well, we put our toe in the water. We can't quite work out how to do a business case. I'm not really sure. Uh, that's the British view. In France, the consumers uh, love to use the mobile phone to engage in shopping. Uh, especially uh, travel services and especially fashion. They love QR codes in France. It's a, uh, it, it, it's a major area of investment. And business, well, business in France says we're looking for the wow factor. Yeah. And they are. 
Some of the most exciting applications there are are being developed in France and, and are really wowing the French consumer. In the US, well, here's an interesting thing that's both a, an opportunity and a threat. What US consumers are doing are going to the mall and then comparison shopping there on their mobile phones. They'll stand in your store and they'll find out if there's another store in the same mall with the same product at a lower price. Yeah. And what business is saying is it's all about the money. The focus in, America, in the American market is find me a short-term gain and I'll invest in it. Yeah. And that's what they want to do. And finally in Germany, well, the Germans work on their mobiles while they travel. They buy more travel services than they, everybody else and they really, 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 really worry about privacy. And in terms of what they're doing, uh, the, German, uh, the German culture really comes through strongly with this. They're more concerned about building it in such a way that it works perfectly and then working out how to apply that perfect uh, technology than uh, perhaps the Americans who are thinking, yeah, if I can get something out there this quarter, that would be great, it will hit my bottom line. And those two cultural differences very much came through in our, in our research piece. Yeah? So uh, just to kind of uh, uh, conclude on the gap here, consumers, they want it now. Uh, there are already people who, who do a bit of mobile shopping, who, who use this stuff regularly, but there's an awful lot who don't. I'm going to talk about those numbers briefly. Uh, and in business side, well, they know that they can do marketing. And that's pretty much where they are today. Its role in customer service, its role in engagement is, is tremendously important. Here's the bad news, though. They want it free. Uh, and where business is at the moment is they're not sure how to monetize and, uh, and how to make the most of it. There, there are things. I'm not going to talk about that. I'm going to leave that to Richard. Uh, they both think, business and consumers think, this stuff's going to save them money. So there's a challenge. That's like two people uh, 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 who go out to dinner and think the other guy's going to pay. Someone's going to get stuck with the waiter and the bill. Yeah. Uh, there's issues around security, and let me stress to you again, the Germans really want their privacy. Um, and then from the business point of view, how do we make it secure? There's been some real stories today uh, around um, the amount of data that's being collected just to provide uh, mobile assurance. Um, and um, that's a real challenge. Uh, does every, who knows what the number one search term of, of this year has been? Anyone want to hazard a guess? iPhone 4, absolutely. And do you know how they know that? Because people are collecting data. Yeah. And how you secure that data, what's yours, what's the networks, what the privacy issues are, is one of those areas where people still aren't properly clear about the rights and wrongs. So uh, we, have some, uh, we have some real challenges that we're facing. But let me summarize the first part of this. Okay, there's clear difference between those who have and those who haven't. There are nearly six million people who have never used a computer to go online. They don't have smartphones. They don't understand the relevance. Yeah, I, I was at a conference uh, at the House of Commons this week, uh, and um, it, it, it was about the digital agenda for those who aren't engaged. And there's an awful large proportion of those people who are never going to be engaged. So on the one hand, we want to make it digital by default, but on the other hand, we need to be aware that that doesn't necessarily work for everybody. Yeah. The number of people who are shopping, yeah, it's increasing. Absolutely, definitely, all the signs, all the research, ours and everybody else's says there's a huge increase. Happy to put my name to that, yeah. Uh, value and type of own commerce transactions are, are going to increase. I'm going uh, to come to that very quickly. Um, iPad. My iPad was nowhere two years ago. Now it represents around 30-something percent of m-commerce that's gone on, yeah. Whether it's 31% or 39%, not quite sure. Lots of people have different views, but it's there. Whatever it's doing, for those who don't have one, whatever it's doing, it's doing enough. People like it. People are using it. It's not a fad. It's here. It's doing something else. We just don't necessarily understand it. 
Frequent users went on to make a purchase. In the UK, 47% of people who were engaged by mobile marketing took an action. Yeah, and that's what you want. Okay, more in the US, France, a lot less. Uh, Germany, around the same number as the UK and US. Right? Behavior, those who purchased via mobile said that they bought more than five things in six months. Okay, right now, uh, put your hand up if you've ex ex uh, experienced a network issue where you haven't been able to connect to a network this month. Okay, uh, that's where we are. Yeah, uh, and the, the number of people who bought things 50% of those who are already engaged in the UK. Now that 50% represents a small proportion of the overall population. Let's talk about that for a second. So in the UK, well, we have about 62 million and around 27% yeah, of, uh, 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 of uh, the uh, actual owners of mobile are engaged in some kind of use of smartphone. Yeah? It doesn't mean they're shopping yet. Okay, so just to be clear, if this, uh, 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 there are 59 million active mobile users in the UK, and out of those, a, a, a relatively small percentage actually have smartphones and use them. By the way, in terms of these figures, they're going to be on the, uh, the stick that you can take away at the end. I, I guess there's a feedback form that you have to submit in order to get that. And there are some additional slides that we've, we've put there that we hope you're going to find a, a, of use, together with a white paper as well. Um, different countries use mobile phones in very different ways. So in this country, I've already said, we, you know, our, our third most important thing is, is, is games. Yeah? In the US, it's the second most important thing. But in France and Germany, it's right down at the bottom. Each culture uses their mobile devices in different ways. And that, that tells you something about uh, the way in which uh, uh, the, these devices have a huge amount of flexibility because we're able to use them in different ways. I use my phone in a completely different way to my children. My children will have their phones and be totally engaged 24 hours a day in a really important conversation about Peter Andre being in the jungle uh, whilst doing everything else that they've got to do. And, um, and I'll switch my phone off at night. Uh, I want to talk briefly about spending patterns. So uh, what this slide is telling you, and again, you know, please do uh, take the downloads for, for, from this stuff, is that we're seeing people being increasingly confident around actually spending real money via their mobile device. So it started out, what, what people spent money on in their mobiles was ringtones. Now we're finding people are actually buying sofas, holidays, airplane, uh, hotels, an awful lot of travel stuff, things that are appropriate to the mobile experience, people are spending real money on now. It's not just a $2.99 uh, app. It's not just something uh, in the middle. They're actually becoming more and more confident, and that's going to increase as the experience improves. Yeah? In addition to that, as, as I said before, people started out with just apps and ringtones, well now they're doing significantly different things. Uh, a significant proportion of France, uh, uh, French and uh, German travel is organized via the mobile device. Now. Yeah. Uh, in addition to that, food and household. Someone told me at one of the big stores, and I, I bet you guys remember who it is and I don't, Someone bought a sofa from, the, from a mobile app. Uh, any, anyone remind me who, which uh, company? There you go. Uh, it's not just a sofa. <laughs> uh, so uh, we're buying stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, but um, here's what uh, consumers said. They thought that it would make the world significantly more convenient for them. Okay, I... I, I I get that they want that, but uh, I'm not sure. They think that it will reduce costs. They think that you're going to deliver better service as a result of it. And that's important. Everyone is talking about marketing, but actually they think it's about service. And they think it's going to save them time. And they think all of these positive, wonderful things, despite the fact that everyone put their hand up and said that they had a network issue. Yeah. 
we're optimists. So maybe that thing around uh, happiness is, is what we want to think, not what, where we are. Uh, the French guy, uh, male 25 to 35, said, I use travel. Yeah, get updates on trains. Uh, the, uh, the German guy said, I want to be sure that I'm constantly not given things I don't ask. The Germans are really anti direct mail, they're really anti unsolicited phone calls, they're really strong on privacy, they have a completely different cultural bias to the rest of Europe, interestingly enough, or the, the parts of Europe that we talk to. Uh, and the Brits, well, we're, we're just kind of weedy and nerdy and we think we want to protect our data and that someone somewhere is going to leave it on a train. And um, the US, I can comparison shop, bro. That's what they think. Yeah, They're using this stuff to get some personal advantage. Okay, so consumers, they want it to be relevant. They want it to be secure. They want personal data protection. They want it to be thought out uh, well, for it to work first time, every time, make it save money, be more convenient and free. Easy. Yeah, I'm sure everyone in the room can do that and, and do that today. But that's not where we are. Uh, right now, mobile advertising is probably one of the biggest areas of spend, but it's by no means what people are looking for. What people are looking for, we learned in the previous slide, is actually customer service, making things easier. Where are we spending our money? We're spending our money on marketing. All right? We're spending our money on sales, and to some extent we're spending it on, on information. But customer service is actually the lowest piece of the pie right now. So what can we do? Well, right now we have a big problem with monitoring. You know, if you are all on Facebook in this room, and what I'm trying to do is to check my current account details, okay, the cellular network is not going to cope. Yeah? Um, the bad news is that this is just today's generation problem, not tomorrow's consumer model where everyone is doing M transaction live. Can you imagine if it took 45 seconds to swipe your mobile phone instead of your card? an additional 45 seconds on top of what that is today, the queues at the supermarket are going to be huge. I mean, it isn't going to work out that way, but, you know, assurance is a huge issue. And uh, I, I was talking to, to, to a colleague this morning. The world that we're talking about, uh, coming about now, is not even the biggest problem. In three to five years' time, we expect to see video content, we expect to see augmented reality to change the, the mobile experience significantly. And, you know, there are people starting to work on, uh, on how we assure that piece right now because we're not assuring today properly. The, uh, the real challenge for, for your clients and, and for those who, who deliver mobile content is you're going to have to understand your mobile service provider much better than you do today. But organizations that we spoke to in our research, well, very few of them really have an overall strategy uh, today. Okay, most said that they don't have an end-to-end -end service assurance strategy. You remember the American, uh, the, the American thing, short term, short term, let's win. Yeah, well, <clears throat> if it doesn't work, all I've done is blown a bit of my marketing budget. It's not going to work like that. And for most organizations in the UK, uh, they haven't really delivered anything in terms of mobile content today. Asking people where they were going to uh, spend their money also showed us that the one thing they weren't going to be spending their money on in, in huge numbers at the early part of this year was mobile assurance. That's increased as we've had some problems during the year. People are beginning to understand that it's a, an important piece. The biggest area is mobile CRM, and that's because what people are trying to understand and people are getting to is that one experience needs to be a strategy for how you engage with consumers. I don't want to give you my details 20 times. I'm actually going to resent it if you ask me, would I recommend you any more times than you have done? I'm starting to say I'll recommend you less because you're really annoying me with the question. Yeah. Stop asking the wrong questions, stop doing things. So, 
Uh, just to conclude, I'm conscious I'm, I'm get, I've done my time. Uh, mobile phones, yeah. We're all going to be shopping more on mobile phones. Why? Because it's easier. It's going gonna, it's gonna to make sense to us. Uh, but there's going to be an awful lot of other things that we're going to want to do more. Yeah, I've started watching TV on my phone when I'm waiting for my kids at stations and things. I quite like the experience. If they're all in the lounge, I may go and watch on my phone somewhere else. Uh, I find that in interesting. But it's all got to be free. I don't want to pay for any of this. Neither does anybody else. Yeah, and mobile shopping will include a new blend of experiences. Remote ordering, self-service. I will go to the shop with a, with a recipe that my wife has, uh, has sent me uh, and um, I will use that recipe in the shop to, uh, 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 in conjunction with the app from the shop and that shop app will tell me aisle number four for the uh, pasta, aisle number six for the sauce, aisle number eight for the appropriate wine. Shopping recommendations will come to me as I walk around the store. That's what the world is going to come to. And that's not, even, that's not I I even the end of it. Five years from now, we may actually see as we walk past the pasta an augmented reality version of what that dish is going to look like when it's cooked. Jamie Oliver may be sitting there on my mobile phone telling me how to cook it. Yeah. OK, uh, mobile will deliver an extended relationship. Because we're already in love with our, our phones. Who would look to find where their phone is if they had to leave because the fire alarm went off? I know I would. Yeah, I lost my phone a few weeks ago. It was like, terrible. Uh, mobile, Facebook and Google will play an increasing role. It's because those guys want it and they want it badly and they're going to find a way to engage themselves and embroil themselves in this. QR codes are going to increase. Uh, there's, there's some stats on QR codes in the handout for you. Yeah, NFC chipped uh, phones and services will be ubiquitous within three years. And that's because it's easier for the manufacturers. Faster chips, larger storage, that stuff's all going to play in the market. All right, tablets like the iPad, you may not get them today, but they're here. They're going to be a bigger piece of the, the puzzle. For business, mobile shopper will become a big market. Yeah. Focused activity on, on demand, led services, we're way behind what the consumers want today. Yeah. And although it's not commonplace in this country, QR codes and those things, they're coming. Yes, they will disappear, uh, but not for a while. Yeah. Right now, they're, they're the new technology. Uh, I won't repeat the comments around the death of Flash. Uh, but everyone's going to have to employ the, uh, the digital agencies to rewrite all of their websites. So there's some extra business next year for you guys, the world of HTML, uh, HTML5. Uh, we're pretty much certain that every major organization will have a mobile presence within the next three years. End-to-end uh, -end assurance needs to be developed. Yeah, and as I say, there are, there are people uh, like my colleague Andrew over here who, who are working on this stuff, but people have really got to engage in it because it's going to be as bad as the, uh, uh, the, the call center in terms of people getting uh, upset around it. So I'm going to conclude. This stuff's coming. It's going to be big, but it's not the only thing fighting for the battery life of your mobile phone. Yeah. Doing it well, doing it across channel, integrating the channel together, these are the really important things that we're going to need to get to grips with. Yeah. Consumers will be shopping on their mobile in, in 36 months regularly. What percentage of them depends on how you deal with the next few years. Make it easy for them, they'll do most of it. Yeah. Make it difficult and they won't. So thank you very much. I'm sorry I've run over. Um, you can find out more stuff uh, from, uh, for, uh, from the details on, on the website. Uh, I hope you found that useful. Do get the, uh, the, the, the handout stick. It's got some other stuff on the back of that that you may find useful. Thank you for your time today.